All right, welcome everybody to this next tutorial. In this tutorial, we're basically picking up on the SOLIDWORKS sample exam. And there's a, a link on the bottom of this video that will take you to the location where SOLIDWORKS provides a zip folder that will contain some of the parts that we're going to be using on this tutorial. So make sure you click on that link if you don't have the parts already so that you can follow along. Okay, so this particular tutorial is going to pick up on question number six where we start basically on question number seven, sorry, where we start basically creating this assembly that you see here. And these are the parts that SOLIDWORKS will provide for you. And you just have to download the zip folder. So one of the first things you want to make sure is when you're looking at the drawing or the illustration of what you're supposed to recreate, make sure you know exactly where the origin is located. Now, if you look at the drawing, the origin is basically shown right at the top of this large pin where you can see the coordinate system and if you notice the x axis is along this particular direction and that's very important to make sure that you follow that um, in order for you to get the, the correct answers so i already have solidworks open and i've created an assembly and i'm going to start importing the first component so i'm selecting the long pin this is where i've basically downloaded the parts to from the zip folder I put them in my downloads folder. So I'm clicking on the long pin, which is the first part that you see on the PDF. Let me go back to the PDF real quick. This is the long pin. Notice the origin is right here. So what I'm going to do for the first part is I'm actually going to just click on the green check mark here on the top left corner. And that will automatically match the origin of the file of this part to the origin of the assembly. So one thing I want to confirm is that the origin is up here at the top, just like it's shown on, on the PDF. So if I click origin right here, you'll notice that you'll get the origin highlighted right there. And you can do it for the part as well. And that confirms uh, that the origin is at the top of the pin. Okay, so that's what you want to do for the first part. Now for the second piece, which will bring in this yellow component, Let's see, enter component. It's called a chain link. I'm going to hit open. This one, I'm just going to click somewhere on the screen. Okay, and this one's free to move because I just clicked on the screen. But on this one, since I clicked on the check mark, this one's locked. Okay, and it's fixed. And you want the first piece to be locked. So we're just going to make now this link over to that pin. And it's just a matter of adding a few mates. So you have to make it concentric by clicking on that cylindrical hole with this cylindrical surface. It lines it up. And then we'll click on the top of the pin to the top of this yellow surface of the chain link. And then that'll make it coincident. Now, for the most part, I believe some of you guys should probably understand those two mates. The other part that's critical is you have to make sure that the orientation of this link is in the X direction. Now, I'm going to go to a isometric view Okay, and I'm going to go back to the PDF. Now on the PDF, you'll see that this surface is pretty much parallel to the X axis. Okay, so I got to lock this surface of the link parallel to that axis. Now, how do you do that on SOLIDWORKS is you basically just confirm the coordinate system right here on the bottom left. You see how the X is pointing in the same direction as it was in PDF. So this has to be pointing parallel to it. It can't be going that way or this way or that way. You need to make sure that you're going in this direction. So let's go ahead and lock that one down. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. To me, the way that I would prefer just to make sure there isn't any misinterpretation of the files is I'm going to go to the mate command and I am going to use the plane, the front plane, because if you notice that front plane is the orientation of the X axis. It's not the top plane, it's not the right plane, but the front plane. So I'm selecting a front plane from the list, and then I'm going to select the same plane from the link. Okay, so you expand the link, you go down to the planes, and I'm going to select the front plane. So I'm lining up the front plane of the assembly to the front plane of the chain link, and then I'm hitting the check mark to accept it. Okay. And if you see, I'm trying to move it, and now it won't move. It's completely locked in. Okay? Now we know we're basically heading in the right direction. 
So we're up to this point right here. Now we have to add this blue pin and then another chain link. All right, so let's go to insert components. And this is a short pin now. I'm gonna hit open, click somewhere on the screen, go to a series of mates, similar to what I did on the other one, concentric, and then coincident. All right, so I need another chain link component. So I'm gonna hold down the control button, left click on the part and drag another one out. And I need another one of the short pin components. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Hold down control, left click on the part and drag a copy out. So now I'm going to do a couple of uh, more mates and the mates are very repetitive. Okay, so I'm going to go into the mate command, click there, click there, hit the check mark. And then I'm going to make the inside surface of this component contact this surface. Okay, and then make that concentric or coincident. Do the same thing over here, concentric. All right, it was a coincident. Now let's go back to the PDF. If you notice the first link has an angle A. Okay, now we scroll down a little bit, I believe is on the next page. Angle A, according to the instructions, is 25 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click on this button here, the angle command. Okay, I'm gonna click on this surface, and then I'm going to click on this surface. Now it went to the back, I'm going to change this value to 25, just like I said on the instructions. Now, that is technically correct. That is 25 degrees, but there's more than one 25 degrees, right? You can flip it. Okay, that's 25 degrees there as well. And if I flip it again, it'll go back to where it was. So this is one option to kind of alternate between the direction of the angle. The other options are here at the bottom. Okay, this one will flip it. If you notice, you get several types of combinations. So sometimes it requires you just to kind of play along with this checkbox and then these two buttons so that you get the right orientation of the 25 degrees. Okay, so this is basically the way that you want it. That's the way it's shown on the drawing. So then you hit the check mark to accept it. Okay, this value never changed. It was just a combination of checking or unchecking this box and then clicking on either one of these two buttons on the bottom. Okay. So now I need more components. So once again, let me get out of the make commands, control, and then drag another part out. Okay, and then once again, just a couple of mates. Like I said, the mates are very repetitive. All right, this one, this one. Okay, let's go back to the PDF. Let's see what the PDF says. Now there's letter B. And that one says it's, oops, sorry. Didn't get the value. Go to the following page. B is 125 degrees. So I'm gonna activate this box. Click on that surface and this surface. Type in 125. Flip dimension, click on that button, and there you go. Let's see, what does that one do? Nope. Okay, so that's the combination that you need. All right, and then hit the check mark. We need one more. The value here is going to be C and C is 130 degrees. All right, control, drag one out, control, drag that one out. Actually, delete this one. I think we need the long pin for that last piece. That one, this one, the check mark, click on that one. On this one, that's coincident. 
hit on that angle command click on here click on here I believe it's 130 all right let's click on that button nope click on that one that looks better and hit the check mark all right and then the last one is this pin here get out of the make command bring that one over here go back into mates click there click there and there and there okay hit the check mark go to an isometric view all right so visually that is a good match to what we see on the actual test all right, so what we want to do now is we want to confirm that we've matched the center of gravity. Now you have to make sure you are in the right units. The sample test has everything in millimeters. So currently right now, if you see on the bottom of my screen, it says IPS. Um, that needs to change to MMGS. So I'm going to click on that arrow and change it to MMGS. So everything's in millimeters. All right, and now that I'm in the right units, let me go over here to mass properties and here goes the center of gravity information and here goes a PDF so first value for X should be 348.66 millimeters there it is for Y is negative 88.48 there it is and for Z is negative 91.40 and there it is so your answer should be a let's go to the uh, answer key at towards the end of the exam and there goes your confirmation for number seven the answer is a okay so now what we have to do is for the following question all you have to do is modify the angles okay it says modify the assembly in solidworks okay so now what we're going to do is go back to the model that we just created and then just change the mates where we plugged in angles we're going to change it to 30 115 and 135 so let me go back to SOLIDWORKS. Now to access those mates, you can either click on here, okay? And then you can just look for the ones that say angle, and then we just modify those, all right? Or you can always click on the part that's angled, for example, this one. And then if you have, this is SOLIDWORKS 2017. If you have this icon with the little eyeball, it'll basically filter out all the ones that are not related to that part and um, it'll give them to you here. So if you click on there, for example, angle number one, and then you edit, it allows you to change the value. So right now we have 25 degrees. I believe this one changed to 30. So just change it to 30, enter, okay. Can move this out of the way and hit the check mark. We can do the next one, angle two, it says 125 you can either change it in this box or you can change it in that box and let's see the 125 now becomes 115 so let me change it on the little box 115 enter hit the check mark and then you have to exit out of this box in order for the rest of the assembly to show up all right so the last one that i need to change is the angle for this link here which is angle three i'm just going to look for angle three on the list Right here for mates, as you can see, there's they're all listed there, but here goes angle three. And then you can click on here. And then 135. Okay, sometimes you have to hit the rebuild button for the assembly to react. Okay, and then let's confirm that 135. All right, very good. So once we've made these changes, it asks us what is the center of mass of the assembly. So once again, we'll go to evaluate, we'll go to mass properties and the center of mass that we have now, because we have modified some of the angles. So that's going to change it is right there. And let's confirm it with the answer key. Let me maximize this real quick. That was the answer key. So the values on the bottom. There we go, 327, 67, 327, 67, negative 98, 39, negative 98, 39, 
negative 102.91, negative 102.91. Okay, so you guys can see we got the right center of mass. All right, guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully it is useful for you guys and you guys kind of get a good idea what to expect. The uh, CSWA exam has some similar questions, but obviously the assemblies will be completely different. But this is a good start. So if you guys figure this one out, feel pretty confident that you guys can work on the ones on the CSWA. But I, I still recommend you guys do a little bit more practice on understanding how to do the angles and manipulate the angles along with uh, concentric and coincident mates, which we have done here. So if you guys have any questions, let us know, and I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you very much.